Hey, Jake here with TheEntrepreneurRideAlong.com. This video is about SEO for food bloggers. I have a client that is a food blogger, just starting to get into SEO, just trying to learn the basics. And the most important thing when you're starting with SEO is keyword research. Keyword research is essentially what are people searching on Google so that you know what to write about to, for those people that are searching those terms on Google, you get to deliver the blogs and the content that they're searching for. So you show up in the search results. Um, to get to traffic to your website. So that's what this video is all about. Keywords specifically for food bloggers. And I haven't done this yet. I, I've actually haven't looked it up. I've, I've done dabbled with it in the past, but uh, I'm just kind of winging it here to see what we find. So first things first, I'm using the tool Longtail Pro. It's what I use for my keyword research and you'll see why it's super easy to use. So it's what I recommend. You can get a free trial if you go over to the entrepreneur ride along.com slash longtail pro. If you go there, you can sign up for a seven day free trial. I am an affiliate and as an affiliate, they give me this opportunity to give away free trial. So go ahead, free keyword research, go ahead, get your uh, free trial at the entrepreneur ride along.com slash longtail pro, all one word. And let's get back over to, uh, let, let's dive into it. So, um, you know, I, First things first, I don't really know what to search about here because I've never started a food blog, but I'm going to start searching, um, you know, just, just kind of random things. So you just plug in seed keywords related to whatever food your blog is about. So, uh, I'm vegan, so I'm going to plug in some, some vegan keywords because that's what comes to, to mind for me. So I'm just going to type in things like as basic as vegan food. Um, I'll do kale. Uh, let's see chickpeas, brown rice. Now these are all pretty broad and vague. So each of these terms, Longtail Pro is going to look at, and it's going to give me 20 suggested results based on each of these searches. Now that feels a little too broad for me. So what I do when I'm struggling to think of things to type into Longtail Pro is I go over to Google and I am just going to type in, uh, I, I want to use the suggested search results that Google prompts me with. So remember kale was one of my words. I'm going to type in kale and see what else popped up with that for like recipes and things. So maybe I have a vegan blog about, I don't know, kale. Uh, okay. Kale chips. That's a good one that I completely forgot about. I used to make kale chips all the time. So I'm going to put in kale chips. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's too similar. I'm going to see what else there was when I typed in kale. So I already got kale chips. Let's see what else there is. Kale salad. Oh, kale soup. That's an interesting one. Let's see, kale, what else we got for kale? Uh, a kale salad, kale sausages, kale white bean soup, we'll do kale salad, okay, that's enough kale. Kale keywords. Now let's think about something else, so let's go outside of that, that vegan realm and let's talk Italian, let's look at pasta. Oh, pasta and kale salad, actually, that's interesting, I'll just type that in while it popped up here as a suggested search result. Well, let's say, uh, let's say we have an Italian blog. So I'm just trying to think of Italian food off the top of my head. Uh, there we go. Here's some specific keywords and I'm just looking for whatever Google is suggesting here. And I'm just plugging in, I'll plug in anything that you can find in the long tail pro and just see what comes back, see what the results are. Let's see. Yeah, I'll just do spaghetti. I'm just going to keep plugging things in here. I'm not totally going to talk through it, but you can watch what I'm doing here. Lasagna, let's see lasagna recipe. It's kind of whatever pops up here. And again, I'm, I'm just doing this as an example. So I think about your food blog and what you have and some of the things that, that pop up. Like I'm, I just thought of uh, chicken parm. Uh, one thing I've actually looked at in the past is crock pot recipes. So I'm going to just type some of that stuff in here. 
sure crock pot chicken uh yeah sure slow cooker chicken recipes i go back and see what else there is for crock pot crock pot baked beans and you can see you can just go down rabbit holes here so okay crock pot what else you got crock pot beef stew sure i'll throw that in here now baked beans made me go back to everything i eat that's vegan something like white bean oh yeah white bean well fake chicken maybe about white bean chicken chili oh and then i, I start thinking about chili it's okay let's see uh, chili bean sauce, sure. I saw chili something gravy. What else did I see? I see chili gravy. I don't know. Uh, I lost it. Try chili garlic, garlic sauce. Okay, that, that's going to be enough for now. But you can see you can keep going and going, and especially if your food blogs, it's endless. There's a bajillion food recipes out there and different types of food, so you can just keep going and going and going. And just like endless content for your food blog by using Longtail Pro to get all these suggested results. You can see I typed in, I don't know how many seed keywords I ended up typing in. But I've got over 484 results now that are coming back of suggested uh, terms that I could write blogs about. And what we're looking at here, just a quick overview. Keywords, these are keywords that people are typing into Google that they are searching for. Volume, that's how, on average, how many people per month are searching for this term. So white bean, chicken, chili seasoning, on average, 50 people per month are searching that term. Average KC, that stands for keyword competitiveness. So that is how easy would it be to rank your blog on Google for this specific keyword. The lower score, the better. You can see Longtail Pro highlights in green if the keyword is easy to rank for so a four is like incredibly low that means like nobody's writing about it so bushes white bean chicken chili recipe i could write a blog about that today and i would probably be ranking number one for it because nobody is using that specific key phrase that specific keyword i would say a score of 35 or below i've found is at least relatively it's at least attainable to rank your blog in the top three spots on the first page of google you want to target the first three spots because just think about when you search a term on Google, you're probably going to click the first result, the second result, the third result, and, and one of those top three is probably what you're going to click on. Uh, so look for a keyword competitiveness score that's a 35 or lower. Anything under a 30 or below, Longtail Pro considers easy to rank for. And you might think that a volume of 50 is, is not enough search volume, uh, but just think of it. Say you write 10 blogs with a search volume of 50. That's That doesn't take too long. You could do that in a month, 10 blogs in a month. And you've got close to 500 people visiting your website if you write a couple of blogs with a search volume of 50. So don't ignore the low-hanging fruit of these blogs that are really easy to rank for, but also have a low search volume. Of course, the, the higher the search volume, the better. But I'm saying don't ignore these because you can stack these. And that's how you get a lot of traffic to your website at the beginning is ranking for these low-hanging fruit, easy, easy keywords uh, and getting all that search volume to your blog. So let's dive in here. I'm going to flip the filters the the uh no I'm going to I'm going to sort it from from highest to lowest. Some of the stuff right away you can ignore like banana bread recipe really hard to rank for, really competitive lasagna recipe of course, really hard to rank for. Uh, this this must be an error. I that might be a programming error here. Pumpkin pie recipe I I highly doubt that's a 4. Um something might funky might be going on there, but you can see that, you know, 823,000 people are searching for a banana bread recipe. You're probably not going to rank for that because everybody's writing about it. So we want to find something with a lower competitive score. So I'm going to flip the average KC here and look at lowest keyword competitiveness with a high search volume. And right away, I'm seeing some good results. And because I've got a lot of results here, I'm actually going to add a filter. I'm going to add a volume filter. And I'm going to say only show me, I'll say greater than 40, include uh, all keywords with a volume greater than 40, just to filter out some of the noise. And look at this. There's some great options for blogs that get a right about here. Uh, vegan bolognese sauce, 590 people searching for a really low search volume, a uh, really low competitive score. Uh, kale chips, a ton of people searching for a low score. Uh, kale berry salad, only 50, but a really low score. Uh, vegan pasta bolognese again 
how to store kale chips. That can be a whole blog about how to properly store your kale chips. 170 people per month, only a score 26. It's a really low score, easy to rank for. Oh, it's, now this is a good one. Air fryer spaghetti squash. That's a really long, specific keyword that probably not a lot of people are writing about because it's such a specific phrase and it's a, a long tail keyword, which means there's there's more words. The more specific you get, the less likely it is that other people are using that specific phrase. So you can imagine there's probably millions of people out there searching, uh, writing about spaghetti. But there's not a lot about there writing air fryer spaghetti squash. But 2,400 people are searching for it and it's got a pretty low score. So the next step you can take with Longtail Pro is you can click on it. It'll open up a new analysis. It's going to show you the top 10 people on Google currently ranking for the term air fryer spaghetti squash. So if you search that in uh, to Google right now, you, you'd probably come up with similar results in the top 10. We can start doing an analysis on who the competitors are. And uh, same thing as the keyword competitive score. Longtail Pro is ranking these competitors and it's, it's showing in, in yellow and green that these guys are, are pretty easy to beat out. If I was to write about, you know, what's our keyword, air fryer spaghetti squash, I could probably beat these competitors and rank my blog in the top 10 here. I can see that if I look at external backlinks, okay, these guys actually got pretty good external backlinks, but uh, that's a, the next step in the SEO process. I won't get into that. First thing I want to look at is everybody using the term air fryer spaghetti squash. Yeah, it looks like a lot of people are using that exact key phrase. Now, some of them aren't using the exact key phrase, but that's always the first thing I check. Um, so that, that one's got potential. I would want to see if nobody was using the exact term air fryer spaghetti squash. Um, I'd be golden. I, I would write about that keyword, and I'd be the only one writing about it and putting it in my title on my blog. Let's use this one as an example, and I'd probably rank first for it. So here's a, a long one. Salsa, chicken, crockpot, cream, cheese. Now, this one, look it. Crockpot fiesta chicken, crockpot salsa chicken, uh, crockpot chicken with black beans and cream cheese, creamy salsa chicken. Nobody is writing about salsa chicken, crockpot cream cheese. So I could go out there and write a blog about specifically this key phrase. Make sure my blog is about that. It's in the title. It's in my H1 heading tags. I'm, I'm talking about it in my blog. And I would probably rank number one for this blog because nobody else is writing about it. So 720 people per month are searching for this. And nobody's writing about it. So there's a golden keyword for any food bloggers out there in the crock pot niche. Go write about this, put a recipe together. You will rank number one for it with this keyword and you will start getting traffic to your blog right away. So that's it. That's basically how you do the keyword research. You can see tons of options here for food bloggers. There are so many opportunities here. Like I, I just scratched the surface on uh, what keywords are out there in the food blog niche. So there's a lot you can do here. That's how you find keywords. Now, if you need help on the next step, go over to theentrepreneurridealong.com slash traffic. If you go to that URL, it will take you to my 1K in one week challenge. That is a five part video series showing you how to rank your first blog on Google to get your first 1000 organic website visitors through SEO to visit your website. It's exactly what I do every time I start a new niche business. This is how I get within the first week. And the first month, I get the first 1,000 people to my website with just one week of work. The first video in the series is all about keyword research. I just showed you that, so you're good to go there. You've already got your keywords. You already followed along here. You're using Longtail Pro, so you got your keywords. The next steps in this video series are showing you how, what to do with that keyword. So you put it in your, you do your on-page SEO. You make sure you use that keyword in your URL, in your the title of your blog. In your heading tags, you're writing about it in your blog. Next video is about internal linking and how important that is to make sure the user experience flows and they are linking uh, within your other blogs back to this key phrase in this blog. And external backlinks, how to get external backlinks from other websites because that increases your domain authority and Google sees that as a, an authoritative metric to say that it's going to rank you higher for this keyword because other people are linking to it. So that's what this video series is. Go, so go to the entrepreneurridealong.com slash traffic. That will take you to this page where you can join the 1K in one week video series challenge to drive more traffic to your business with SEO. So that's it for this video. This is the keywords SEO and keywords for food bloggers video. I hope you enjoyed and I can't wait to see you start driving more traffic to your website.